About halfway through Jesus' three-year ministry, he takes his apostles on a little R&R to Caesarea Philippi. He, he wants to get them isolated, ask them this important question. Who do people say that I am? And there were various opinions on offer, but that's not the real issue. He then turns to the apostles and says, who do you say that I am? That may be the most important question you'll ever be asked. And Peter, in a moment of brilliance, says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. <laughs> and Jesus says, yeah, that's pretty good, Peter, and I know that didn't come from you. God gave that to you. He brings them to this area to make this great confession. Why here? It's the farthest they'd ever traveled from their own territory. Because, not Caesarea Philippi, there was a defunct city, at that time it was just an archaeological site, called Dan. And that was important in Old Testament history. See, Dan was the northernmost city of ancient Israel, and it was the place that Jeroboam had put a golden calf for the people to worship. Now, that was idolatry. Clearly, the nation went wrong. But the nation didn't go wrong because of Jeroboam's calf. It actually went wrong because of Rehoboam, who pushed Jeroboam out. Rehoboam was the son, you'll know this name, Solomon. When Solomon died and Rehoboam takes over the throne, the general population came to him with a request. Please, lighten our tax burden. Your father was killing us. And so he's got a choice to make. Now remember, he's in the Middle East where power matters. And he's wondering, should I be tough in this moment or should I be kind in this moment? Should I serve the people and give them what they want or should I force them to serve me? So he asks his advisors. The younger advisor said, you tell them that your little finger is bigger than your father's waist. No, no relief for you, even more taxes. Get in line or I will crush you. The other advice, the older men said, you know, it's, it actually would work to your advantage if you served the people. And this is from 1 Kings 12.10. It's kind of a hidden gem in the Old Testament. Very revealing. And I think it's probably one of those verses that Jesus meditated on for his own ministry. These men said, I quote, If you serve them, they will serve you all the days of their life. And this is the very first statement of servant leadership that I can find anywhere in historical literature. It was never followed until Jesus Christ. Young Rehoboam flaunted the advice and he, he says, no, I'm going to follow the young man's advice. And because of his harsh treatment of those that he were serving him, they rebelled. And the rebellion was led by Jeroboam, hence the problem at Dan. So they're in that very spot where the nation went bad. Jesus brings his disciple back, kind of circling around historically, to take the right path from this spot to be a servant leader instead of a, a bullying politician. And so Jesus has to immediately follow Peter's confession with the clarification that Peter, you're right, I am the Christ. I'm the Son of the living God. But I'm going to go to Jerusalem and I'm going to die on a cross. That's how I'm going to get my victory. And Peter, he objects, no, Lord, no, that will never happen to you. And Peter goes from the golden boy to on the outs just like that because Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Well, that's a little rough, isn't it? I mean, Peter's just trying to stand up for you. No, here's why. In that moment, Peter was doing the exact same thing to Jesus that Satan had done two and a half years earlier in the wilderness when he tempted him. Saying, Jesus, you don't have to go to the cross. There's an easier way. You're God's son. You can avoid the pain and suffering. You don't have to suffer for your people. Make them suffer for you. It is a leadership lesson that is at the core of Christianity. See, Jesus has, has to let them know, not only will he pick up a cross, but so must they. Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. The way of the cross is not just the path that Jesus walked. It is the model of life that he gives to you and to me. You see, cross is not just what Jesus did. 
It is what we are to imitate in our own leadership. And both crosses, his and ours, saves. When Jesus took up his cross, he saved souls. When Christians take up our cross, we save society.